about you? Not too bad. Um, I, last we spoke, I think it was back in February this year. Um, since then, I know some things have kind of happened between the last time we uh, we spoke and now. Um, but how has your summer been and how has everything been in preparation for your upcoming fight? Um, it's been great. I mean, this past year has probably been one of my harder years, you know, especially, uh, you know, personally and on my career. Um, so I'm super excited to be back. You know, things are going smooth right now. And uh kind of easing my way into a camp, you know, I have an opponent right now, but I'm training my normal schedule. Um, and I'm super excited. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be back to the normal, the normalcy of, of what I'm used to. Of course. Uh, and before I go any further, first off, thanks for taking your time to come on here and uh, let me interview interview about your upcoming fight. And second, I got to ask, I, I saw your story, I think. What's with uh, you not liking Halloween Kills? You know, what, what was wrong with the movie? I Okay, I don't know. I'm like, I'm a big horror movie fan. Uh, I will admit I'm more of like a paranormal horror movie fan than like gore. But I was like maybe 30 minutes in and it was just, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I thought the acting was bad. I thought the gore was like kind of corny. Like, I don't know. It seemed more like a comedy horror movie to me. And like, I was under the impression it was going to be like scary. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I just wasn't impressed. I also have a short attention span though. So that might just be me. So it's safe to say that you do not recommend I go see it. I, I would not recommend it. I mean, I don't know. You can like give it a try, but I wouldn't pay to go see it like you can watch for free maybe but i don't know it was just wasn't a good movie in my opinion i i think the idea that i was getting from it it seemed more um it, it seemed like it was advertised more like an action th- more like an action or like the whole town was going after the guy that yeah. kind of, that's the kind of feel i was kind of getting from it this doesn't make sense to me because like there's like i don't want to blow anything but there's like parts of the movie where he's just like walking towards people like like spraying a fire hose at him or shooting a gun he just like keeps walking and it's like then the people like don't move and then he stabs him i'm like why didn't they move like he's coming at you and a fire hose isn't scaring him away you're not gonna run like you're just gonna let him stab you in the face like i don't know to me it was just like impractical i think i like uh, like paranormal stuff because i like it the more realistic it is and the more scary it is the more i like it if it's along the lines of like okay this could never happen then i'm i like lose interest yeah, and it's like I think that's why a lot of movies about like religion and a lot of those like those horror based movies about like uh, paranormal and things like that that have been about real events are more scarier than the other. I think. Yeah, I want to like not want to go in my living room when it's dark. Like that's how scared I want to be. I want to watch a movie and not feel comfortable myself. Like that's how I want to feel after I watch a movie, which sounds weird to say, but it's true. Literally, that's how I felt when I was a kid watching The Ring. Like I was scared to pick up the phone after. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, um, so kind of back in February, we were discussing about uh, an upcoming fight of yours with Cheyenne Buys. Obviously, that didn't work out. Um, I know you kind of at the beginning of uh, of this interview, you kind of just touched upon it. it's been a bit of a tough year. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like how hard is it to have such a lengthy uh, layoff um, and not having that certainty to get a fight? Yeah, you know, it was it was really rough because like if anyone's followed my career, they know like I used to fight like three, four plus times a year, whether it was MMA or boxing or grappling, you know, um, the longest I'd ever taken off was like a month and a half, maybe, you know, uh, from when I was 18 on. Uh, so for me, it was really tough because it's kind of all I knew, you know, um, but for me, I was like kind of struggling with an eating disorder it got pretty bad. And then uh, it just got to the point where I had to address it. You know, it had been a problem for a while, but I was kind of getting away with it. And during that camp with uh, when I was preparing for Cheyenne, um, I remember I was like 10 days out and I finally was like, I just couldn't take it anymore. You know what I mean? I just had a lot of health health issues compiling because I had been ignoring them. Um, So it's been kind of hard because ever since then, I kind of had to like, I had to stop training for two months. I didn't step in the gym at all for like two months. And I slowly had to work my way in and now everything's like finally feeling healthy, back to normal. Um, For sure the healthiest I've ever been, you know, I'm eating um, and it feels good. You know, I think it's, it's important that you got to take care of yourself before you can go in and fight. And that's, that's the main thing that I think a lot of, I guess we call them casual, casual fans don't really understand is they think, oh, that person pulled out, what's going on. Well, people don't understand the difficulty behind the curtains, I think. Yeah. And and I think it's like, it's more than just like, I don't know, for me, it was, it's called an eating disorder for a reason. You know what I mean? It's like a disconnect in your head about things. And 
I think I would have had this problem whether I was in a weight-based sport or not. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just something personal, but being in this sport didn't help at all. Uh, so, you know, it's more than just like making weight because I don't have a problem making weight. You know what I mean? I don't walk around super heavy. Like I'm always in great shape. Um, but for me, it was just like, I developed this, like, I didn't, I just didn't eat, you know what I mean? Like I would eat probably like 500 ish calories a day, be training three times a day with no intensity control, just going, you know, all out for three sessions. Um, and I did that for years, you know? Um, so for me, it was just like, I got away with it because I was so young, I think. Um, but I finally got to the point, or my body did, because I don't know. I never, I've never pulled out of a fight. I have never thought I would ever pull out of a fight. Uh, so for me, I was trying to fight it and fight it and fight it. And so literally my body was like, we are not doing this. Like I would go in the sauna and not sweat. Like I would do three training sessions and not sweat. Like my body was just not allowing me to do anything. And how did the UFC respond to that when they did, were you, did you have to kind of tell them what was happening? Did you have to be? Uh, yeah, I, so I had, um, I had a lot of help from the UFC PI actually. Um, you know, I had been communicating with them before I had pulled out because I was like, look, I got all these issues and, you know, they had advised me to pull out, you know what I mean? But they had advised me to pull out like a couple weeks prior to when I pulled out. Cause I was like, no, I can still do it. Like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. You know, I've, I've fought injured. I fought feeling not good. Um, but they had told me like, I think you should pull out. I think your health is, you know, on the line here. And, uh, when I pulled out 10 days out, um, my manager had talked to the matchmaker. So I don't know how that went, but, um, I just explained to the manager and we didn't know it was anything serious at the time. You know, we thought it was just like something minor. And then when I went to the PI, got a bunch of test results done. And, uh, that's when we realized, okay, like we're going to need a little more time than we thought. Uh, cause at first they talked about rescheduling possibly the Cheyenne fight. And I straight up was like, well, I don't know. I want to get all the tests done first and then we could see. And then, uh, we kind of figured out it was going to be up to my body to decide when I could fight next, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That must be hard. Yeah, it was. I mean, I think the hardest part is like, uh, you know, all my hormone levels were shot. I was anemic. Um, like none of my like organs were fully functioning. Like it was to the point where I literally had to like, uh, like I, I never ate food. So I had to like reverse diet and start eating, you know, and I don't know, it was a lot of mental hard things, but it was also physically. And, uh, like you said, I think the biggest problem was like, I didn't know when my body was going to like be okay with me fighting. You know, I used to walk at like, uh, a super low weight. So I had ba barely had any weight to cut to 115. And then when I reverse dieted, I shot up a little bit and I was freaking out because my body was still learning how to process. And it was just, uh, it was a lot for sure. But, um, you know, I was staying disciplined. I was staying the course. I was trusting everyone from the PI. I was trusting myself, my coaches, and I'm finally back. So I'm excited. You know, and, and kind of talking about um, fights falling apart. Um, if you were talking to someone that was trying to get into MMA, would you like what would you describe the hardest part of uh, as a career as a fighter? Would it be the you know opponents pulling out of fights, the uncertainty of fighting, or is it the training, or is the fight itself? I don't know honestly. I mean, I think it depends on who you ask. I think everyone has like a different opinion. Right. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing is the amount of pressure I put on myself. Um, I feel like I've always been super super self critical, and like that's what kind of landed me in this situation. You know whether I'm self-critical in fighting or outside of fighting, um, I've always been super hard on myself. So with me, um, I've gone a lot better, especially recently, but like, let's say you have a bad training session. Like I used to beat myself up about it. You know what I mean? Uh, I used to go back and watch my, my own tape and pick it apart and be like, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. And I feel like that pressure that you put on yourself can affect you a lot. You know, it can affect your performance. It can affect your health, obviously. Um, so for me, I think that's my, that's been my hardest part, you know, uh, that kind of mindset made me overtrain, made me not eat. Um, so I don't know, it's just a psychological part of it too. You know what I mean? It's not just like you go in there and you train and you're a meathead and you go fight. There's a lot more to it. There's a thinking game, there's a mental game, there's a prep. Um, so I think it's that that kind of separates like, and it took me a long time to learn it. I mean, I'm young and I'm a rookie in a sense, but I'm also a vet in a sense. I have like 11 pro fights. I've been doing this since I was 16, uh, fighting professionally since I was 18. So for me, it's like, uh, it took me a long time to realize that. So that's what I would say is the hardest part. Like just kind of being lenient with yourself mentally, like be consistent, you work hard, but like, you don't have to beat yourself up and be perfect with everything. So you up and coming fighters, listen to this girl right here. <laughs> Please don't do what I did. <laughs>
Um, now let's talk about um, you know you fight with Jasmine Jas Jessica Biddick. I'm I'm gonna get her name wrong. No, I I haven't even tried to say her last name once, and I probably won't out of just respect, and I don't want to be humiliated, so <laughs> I won't do that. But anyway, you know you have the fight with her on January fifteenth. Um, yep. Have you been told uh, like the event where it's gonna be? I haven't heard anything. Uh, no, I haven't heard anything. Um, uh, I'm assuming it'll be in Vegas uh, because on January 22nd, which is the next weekend, there's actually in Anaheim, which I didn't know about. I live like two cities away, so I don't know. I wish I was on that card. But either way, um, I'm guessing it'll be in Vegas because usually they do fight nights at the Apex and pay-per-views like out somewhere else. So if I had to take a guess, it would be in Vegas, but I'm not really sure. Either way, like it doesn't make a difference to me. I'm just going to go out there and fight. So <laughs> I'm excited. That's awesome. And I, I'm sure you're excited to, to return. Um, that being said, so you knew that you were going to be fighting Jasmine. So I would assume, have you watched any of her, any of her film? Have you, did you get a chance to see her fight at uh, the Dana White Contender Series? Um, I did not see her fight at the Contender Series. And I personally am not a big um, like tape watcher. Um, early on in my career, I was, but I, I kind of got myself in trouble when I was <laughs> younger because I would like watch you know if I expect the fighter to do the same thing and like you know so I know generally about her obviously I'm not going in there blind you know but my coaches uh my training partners they watch a lot of footage for me um you know they try to replicate they give me tips and hints and you know and stuff like that uh but personally like watching tape some fighters love it some fighters hate it it's just not my thing you know what I mean like I said I know about her I know her strengths I know her weaknesses I know everything about that but I'm not gonna sit there and, and watch her fights of course and i think another fighter has talked to me uh before about it and, it, and she and, and they're like well it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you can watch everything but the problem is it gives you a wrong perspective on well, their fighting. Thing, and like personally like i when i look at my past fights like i have gotten so much better you know and I am expecting that as well. You know, I'm always expecting a better version of what I've seen in the past. So for me, I don't want to watch something and maybe underestimate someone or the vice versa, you know, watch someone do something and be like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, so for me, it's just like, I'd rather just focus on myself. Uh, I've, I've been through the, the tape footage phase. And uh, for me, it only, uh, I was focused too much on the other person, you know? So for me, it's like, I'm just going to go in and do, play my game, be aware of what she does, but also like pay attention to myself, you know? Well, so you're saying that um, you didn't get a chance to watch her fight um, to fill you in. So at, at the end, I think she, I'm not sure if it was her interview right after or when, when she was announced that she got the contract, but she went through uh, a three round war. She's all battered up and she went up to Dan and said, I'll fight literally next week in, in Vegas if you want me to. So that kind of add to with her that, that, that I mean, that kind of character that she brings do you, you kind of expect to see have that kind of character bring into this fight? And does that excite you? Um, I mean, I expect every fighter that I'm fighting in the UFC to have that mentality, whether they, you know, talk like that or not. So for me, um, I'm not expecting anything different than, you know, my past opponents because we're in the UFC, especially now that we're in the UFC, you know, we're in the UFC. Everyone's a fucking tough fight. Um, everyone's going to go on there and fight their ass off, you know? So you have to kind of expect that from every opponent and, uh, for me personally, like I like it when, you know, fighters are like that. I want to beat someone at their best. You know, I don't want to beat someone if they crack or if they give up. Like, so for me, um, you know, yeah, I kind of expect that with every opponent, whether they, you know, talk big or they don't say anything at all. I expect the same kind of intensity every time. Of course. And I mean, for yourself, you know, you've had the experience in, in the past to have your UFC debut. It's a big show um, for her. It's going to be a big show as well. I mean, her it's going to be her debut. Do you kind of expect to see a quick pace from her or like what? Like, I mean, every fight's different. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I'm expecting uh, intensity. You know what I mean? I'm expecting the best version of herself. I'm expecting her uh to be tough and and to want to win so for me uh i keep the same intensity usually every fight you know and i'm expecting especially uh in your debut you want to make a statement you know so uh but like i don't know like i said i feel like i i expect the same from every opponent obviously every opponent uh has a different pace and a different you know whatever but uh for me i'm i'm expecting someone who wants to come off and take my head off that's what you have to expect you know if you don't expect that you're in trouble so for me i am expecting uh, the most aggressive version of her 
You know, and, and like I said um, previously, you know, um, you're coming back from the layoff. Um, I know there's fighters that talk about the belief of ring rust. Is that do you is that something you believe in, or do you believe in the hard work that goes into you, into a? a um, well, since I was 18, I've had 11 pro fights uh, with like six pro boxing matches in between that and uh, countless grappling matches. Um, I'm in the gym every day, two to three times a day. So for me, uh, it's pretty much second nature to me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's exciting. I'm not going to lie. It makes it a little more exciting coming back, you know, because I've missed the adrenaline. I've missed the moments, you know, I feel like every you train to fight, you know, so when you're training and, and you can't have a fight coming up or you're forced to even stop training, it could be hard. Um, but on the flip side, uh, people have to realize like, I've never been this healthy. You know what I mean? I've, I've always been running off of three hours of sleep, not eating anything, like always malnourished, like, and I've always been strong, but I've never been healthy. Uh, so for me, like this is the healthiest I've been. So yeah, I've had a long layoff, but I've also improved physically and mentally like leaps and bounds in this, you know, past almost a year, I guess. Um, you know, I've had to shift some thinking and, uh, you know, really change like as an athlete. And I feel like I'm finally now a professional athlete, you know, before I was just some young gun who's freaking winging it. Uh, but I don't really believe in ring rust. I mean, if I like had took uh, almost a year off of fighting and was like goofing off and like, you know, messing around, then I would believe in that. But I've been nothing but focused, even on my time off, you know, focused on being a better athlete, being a better person to be a better athlete. Uh, so I don't think that'll affect me. Do you, feel, do you believe that a lot more fighters could benefit from taking more of those lengthy times off? I understand everyone wants, everyone wants to get paid. Um, you know, I think it's always different, you know, if after this, you know, as long as I can stay healthy, uh, I would like to fight like pretty soon after, you know, I think it all depends. I think, uh, this has kind of taught me that everything has seasons, you know what I mean? Like I had my feet, foot on the gas since I was 18 and it's like, this just 2021 was not my season, you know what I mean? And then that's okay. And it took me a long time to be okay with that, you know, but I think, uh, learning to kind of roll with the punches, like it just helps, you know, like 2021 wasn't my year. I had to focus on getting healthy and, and being healthy and making sure, making sure I do simple things like freaking eating three meals and snacks in between and being hydrated, you know? Um, but in the long run, it's like, as long as you're taking care of your body, I think you need to go at your pace. If you go fight three, four times a year and you're healthy, do it. If you can't, maybe don't, you know what I mean? And that's something that I kind of, uh, I had to learn the hard way. You know, I kind of just fought three, four times a year and grappled and boxed in between and never stopped, never took any time off. And then now look where I'm at, you know? So, um, I intend to go in with a very new approach and a smarter approach. So. Well, to kind of elaborate on what you're uh, talking about earlier, um, I, I, I watched the, or I, I saw a post that you had back, I think it was around July and it was, and you talked about, you know, you're, you're, you're fully, you're fully healthy, you're ready to go and you put hashtag K2.0. Is this uh, a, a sign for uh, things to come? Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've never been healthy, you know what I mean? And just because someone looks healthy or they look like they're in good shape doesn't mean they are. You know, I was functioning at a very, you know, bad, uh, I don't know how to say it, but like I was functioning off a of very little for a long time, you know, and I was, it was working for me, but I was not healthy. You know what I mean? Uh, I think my last fight when for with Corey McKenna, I literally walked in a fight week at 117. I was walking five pounds off for like a week and a half. Like, it was like, and it wasn't healthily done. You know what I mean? It's not like I just walked around. I was just not eating. And like, for me, like, I, I don't know. I just didn't put my health first. I thought what I was doing was what I was supposed to be doing. And I wasn't eating. And now I'm, I'm eating carbs. I'm not scared of them. I'm eating protein. I'm not scared to eat. I'm eating, you know what I mean? I'm eating everything and I'm not scared to like eat anymore. So for me, I'm, I'm finally well nourished. I'm finally taking rest when I need to rest. I'm making sure that I have different intensities with my different trainings. Not everything has to be balls to the wall, you know? So for me, I, like I said, I feel like I'm a professional athlete now. So, um, I'm excited to perform, you know, with my new set of like skills, I guess. And they're not necessarily like skills, but their skills off that's helped me. So. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, um, when you do, uh, get pull off the win on January 15th, uh, any, any plans to celebrate anything you want to do to, to kind of celebrate your, your return back? I mean, not really. Uh, I'd like to get back in there soon, you know, but I would like to like take a week or two to, to not train. I think that's something, uh, I've never done. I've always, you know, unless it's like, 
super quick if I, you know, I know injuries or whatever, but even then I, I never even take, like I will fight on Saturday and be in the gym Monday morning. You know what I mean? So for me, I think I just need to take a couple of days after just chill out, let my body relax. Um, and, and then we'll see from there. You know, I don't really want to, I don't need to go on vacation or like, you know, I don't want to go out partying or anything. I just want to uh, get back to it. Awesome. And just your, I just want your thoughts, uh, UFC, uh, 268, um, you know, you have the champ, Thug Rose and, uh, Wei Li Jing. Um, who, who do you think has a rematch? I got Rose. Um, I, I underestimated her the, the first fight they had. Um, I thought it would be close, you know what I mean? But I thought Whaley was going to pull it off. Um, but you know, I, I think Rose has like really developed, especially ever since that Andrage, um, loss, I feel like she's kind of, uh, hit a new speed, you know? So for me, uh, I think she pulls it off again. I don't know how, but I think she pulls it off again. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, um, thank you for taking your time. I, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, good luck on the 15th. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.